Very good. We're here with uh, Dr. Jose Navia, uh, cardiac surgeon uh, from the Cleveland Clinic. I'm uh, Juan Umania, adult cardiac surgeon practicing in Bogota, Colombia. Dr. Navia is uh, a well-known surgeon, originally trained uh, in uh, Argentina, and moved to the Cleveland Clinic where he finished his uh, cardiac surgical training correct. in 1996, I yes. believe, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, Dr. Navia has several areas of expertise, including minimally invasive cardiac surgery, has developed several devices, and more recently has uh, developed a uh, complex uh, operation, uh, which is called the hemi-commando procedure. Uh, before we talk about the uh, hemi-commando procedure, uh, Jose, why don't you tell us a little bit about the history of the commando operation? Uh, there is some debate as to whether uh, the origin of the operation was in Toronto or if it was in Cleveland Clinic. The uh, uh, original paper was published by Tyrone David in 1996, I believe. Correct. But there are uh, other versions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I started training in the Cleveland Clinic in 1994. At the time, uh, Dr. Lytle was working in an aggressive endocarditis with involved aortic and mitral valve and then also the intertrial fibers of the heart. Um, it was interesting to see how this, this big operation can be done with the reconstruction of the, of the valve and replacing of the valve. At the time, Dr. Teron David started working on the same, same concept and then um, reconstruct the heart with the bovine pericardium and replace the valve, rec remove all the tissue, very aggressive debridement. And Dr. Lytle at the same time did the same way. So both together, I think, uh, um, working in the same concept to attack this kind of very, very aggressive infection by removing all the infected tissue, reconstruct the valve, and change the valve. So this is a very sick patient. And then I was thinking, uh, and the evolution of this, uh, this big surgery tried to simplify the surgery. Because as I told you before, most of the patients that we've seen right now uh, they had prosthetic valve endocarditis in which create an infection, prosthetic valve infection, uh, aortic root abscess, and the extension of this disease to the intertidal fibrosing trigon and the aortic mitral membrane, and also invade the anterior leaflet. And I was thinking in, in myself, so why we need to change two valves if we can repair the mitral valve, preserve the mitral valve, and reconstruct all the aortic root. That was the idea of this EMI commando, to simplify the technique, basically. It is, it is a huge operation and an operation that, that, that uh, we as surgeons all over the world are in need of performing more and more uh, with the uh, with patients living longer, uh, surviving for longer period of time, uh, for periods of time with uh, prosthetic uh, uh, valves. Uh, and also due to the uh, you know, recent spike in the use of uh, IV drugs, uh, we, we, we are certainly seeing more and more endocarditis. Why don't you tell us a little bit, obviously the evolution to the hemi-commando procedure was probably uh, a, uh, came from the evaluation or the uh, analysis of results within the commando operation uh, cohort. What, what were those results? Why yeah, the result was, as, as you mentioned very well, so very sick, comor very high comorbidity patient. Most of the patients are in the ICU, reoperation, in emergency situations. And doing a two replacement reconstruction has a tremendous morbidity and mortality associated between different, different uh, articles of uh, data, between 8% to 30%. So we have these kind of complex problems after the surgery, not just only for the, during the surgery, but also recovery of these patients. As I always say that this, uh, this operation is so important for the young surgeon to, un to understand the approach of this. First approach of the surgery is how can we perfuse the patient? How can we open? All the strategy to perfusion is important. The second stage of this operation, commando, emi commando, is reconstruction, remove all the tissue be a big uh, aggressive debridement and reconstruct and then the third is to replace the valve. The, the third portion of the operation is coming off the pump. How the strategy because most of these patients has a very low um, low um, 
pressures, uh, uh, septic uh, parameters, uh, low coagulopathy, edema. So very important how can you manage the coming of the pump and then when do you have to close the patient, when you have to uh, do some uh, intraoral volume pump, use another extra corporeal circulation or ECMO for some uh, pulmonary problem. So these three stages of the surgery is very important, critical for, for manage this kind of patient. Very good. Now you mentioned that the uh, mortality uh, for the commando operation ranges between 18 and 30 percent. Correct. How was that impacted by the uh, Hemi Commando We operation? have done um, the first uh, paper that we published this year with 17 patients, actually uh, in, in, in uh, 17 patients in ter of uh, between 2010 to 2017. So we moving forward to more and more patients. Uh, we have only three, per three patients die, eight percent of the patients. So uh, very important for us to reduce the mortality. We see reduced morbidity and mortality. Only uh, one patient require uh, ECMO intraoperative. We have no death in the operative procedure. So we have only three patients die in intra-hospital intra uh, death. Uh, and the evolution over time, uh, one year is 91% uh, survival and three years, 82%. So we are very, uh, very satisfied with the result. Right that, right. Is, that is a, a phenomenal very, improvement. Very, very important. Phenomenal improvement. For those of you watching, and I, you can click on the link to watch uh, the video of the operation performed by Dr. Navia. Now, why don't you give us some tips and, uh, as to how to perform the operation? Uh, for those of uh, for those watching uh, this interview, uh, for me personally, uh, uh, practicing in Latin America, uh, and 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 from there we'll go on to to discuss uh, how surgeons can train uh, to yes. do this. Uh, which hospitals uh, should be doing these operations? Should everybody try to do it? I, I believe not. Well, the operation is, 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 um, is uh, usually take a, a long, long surgery. It's like a 200 minutes of cardiopulmonary bypass. It's a three to four hour surgery. Uh, in summary, usually um, I approach the patient but try to transect the SVC to approach the matchal valve through the dome of the left atrial and also transect the aorta to see very well the, the disease. And this remove the previous prothetic aortic valve, they breathe all the, all the circular, most of the time it's circular abscess around the uh, aortic annulus, and then remove all the anterior leaflet, the clear zone of the anterior leaflet infected. So in this area you remove aorta, aortic annulus, aortic mitral membrane, and all the clear zone of the anterior leaflet. Preservation of the subalbar apparatus on the rose zone of the free edge of the, of the anterior leaflet maintain the, the, um, the valve, the mitral valve. Most of the patient, I would say, 80, more than 80% of the patient has an aortic root abscess in both the anterior leaflet, but create completely intact the posterior leaflet and the subalbar apparatus. It doesn't need to be replaced. So basically, we size the homograph with a here dilator, and then we match the distance of the segment of the anterior leaflet of the native anterior resected with the anterior leaflet of the homograph. And then we suture back together with the three O prolin around. Then we repair the matchup valve with the, with the annuloplasty because the initial, uh, the initial 10 patients, we didn't do that. So I saw in the echocardiogram after that, there's some hypermobility of the anterior leaflet. The reason why is because the two trigons are completely lost of the connection of the, of the fiber skeleton of the heart. If you don't put this, this is start moving, uh, moving too much during the surgery, after surgery. So we repair the mitral valve, we reconstruct the anterior leaflet with the anterior leaflet of the homograph, and then after that we do the, all the sutures of the uh, aortic homograph, most of the time of the alpha tract because all the annual is completely destroyed. So we suture running suture technique of the homograph, and mainly this is the operation. So sometimes, because the tissue are so fragile, I put a patch of pericardium on the alpha track. And the reason why is because you have to have a healthy tissue to put the stitches. Sometimes when you pull down the homograph to sit and you pull the, the suture, you can tear the tissue. So this is another, another thing that you have to clear, have in mind to put some, some pericardial patch inside the LV in order to, to support these uh, sutures. Right. Then after that, you connect the two cornea ostium, like a no normal homograph implantation, and close the dome of the left atrium with a patch of bovine pericardium or altola pericardium. Right. That's, that's basically it. What, for those who don't have homographs available to them, uh, is there an option? Uh, 
what what other yeah. tissues can, can we use? Autologous pericardium, yeah, uh, decellularized pericardium, uh, uh, what, what are the options? Bovine pericardium. I, I prefer to use autolog pericardium because it's a patient pericardium. It's more flexible. Autolog pericardium is the best. Bovine pericardium could be. That on graph, I don't like to do that. Some some surgeons do that, but I don't like because they become very, very stiff. So the mobility of the anterior leaflet could be have problems like stenosis or, or prolapse too. So I don't like to use uh, this kind of uh, graph material. Right. Uh, autologous or bovine pericardial should be fantastic. If you don't have a homograph, like in Latin America, um, I think uh, the, um, the stainless valve could be one of the, the solution for this, this kind of patient that you, can, you cannot reconstruct anything because it's so destroyed. So you have to you know, suture like an emmy root, uh, like a freestyle, right. uh, and, and to overcome this problem if you don't have homograph. That's that's uh, that, that's that's great advice. True. Now the uh, uh, there, there's there's of course the question of uh, the relationship between uh, volume, hospital volume, surgical, mm -hmm. you know, surgeons volume, sure. uh, and results. Uh, this th these cases even at a, at a center like yourself, like like Cleveland, uh, you clearly have uh, a, a volume that is not massive. We're talking about sixty patients compared to 50 patients. Sure. Uh, what would your recommendation be for lower volume centers or centers that, that tend to see more, uh, more and more endocarditis? Uh, I think, as you mentioned very well, in Ohio, we have an epidemic of uh, IV drug abuse patients. So this is all around the country and most of patients around the world have uh, endocarditis. So we, we see more and more. The, the key issue is try to train people, surgeons, mainly young surgeons. As I mentioned before, when we discuss um, the evolution of the, the valve disease is in treatment is going towards the transcatheter valve, but endocarditis is going to be driven by cardiac surgeons. So cardiac surgeons need to learn that. So I think it's our responsibility to teach, teach these surgeons. And when you have a difficult cases like these and your center has no possibility to do it, just transfer to referral center that we can we can uh, address this problem, mainly in young patients that we've been seeing a, a tremendous amount of opportunity to, to fix it. And as we're running out of time, uh, one last question. Sure. The role of the heart team uh, in the management of these patients. Fantastic, that is a good question. I think um, preoperative, uh, the role of cardiologists, Im images, neurologists, ID, is and an ICU is tremendous to work together because in order to save this patient, you have to be a, a preoperative images and diagnosis. Uh, most of the patients we do the CT scan of the brain, uh, sometimes angiogram to see there's no mycotic aneurysm. We control by TE, see if the valve is rocking or embolized or how much, uh, uh, how big is the vegetation. So this is all the discussion to see when we have to act as a cardiac surgeon. Then after that, post-op, as I mentioned before, is very important not just only in the ICU, but also in recovery. So pacemaker, EPS people, most of the patients have heart block, so have to have epicardial replacement or pacemaker. Uh, IV, IV um, antibiotics with a, a, at least a month and a half after that. IV drug abuse patient have to recovery and, or for addiction dependence. So there's a lot of things you have to do in, the, in, a, in a team, but cardiac surgery alone cannot do that. So it has to be a team, a team effort. Well, this is this has been fascinating. It's fascinating, uh, it's and and uh, and we could clearly go on uh, for a much longer period of time. Uh, I look forward to uh, continuing this uh, discussion and conversation. I hope it was uh, uh, useful to uh, everybody watching. Uh, uh, I, I, it, and, and I believe that that contacting you or through sure. through uh, Cleveland Clinic Absolutely. Uh, for uh, for further training. Is something we should all look forward to doing. Absolutely. Then there's a, there's a video on the website that uh, you can take a look at all the step. I, I summarize in two minutes, but it takes a long time for. Uh, but it can be done. It's just only training is more important for Wonderful. for everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right. It was a pleasure.